You're listening to the international hit show, The Baby Names Podcast. And here are your hosts, the Moss Sisters. I'm Jennifer Moss. And I'm Mallory Moss Katz. And we're the founders of BabyNames.com, the first and foremost name site online since 1996. We should get an award or something for that, Jen. I know. There can't be many sites that started that early that are still around. Not many, like us and eBay. Craigslist. Yeah, Craigslist. Just those three. It was just us. It was a boring internet, but you could sell your antiques, find a date, and name your baby. There you go. <laughs> so, wow, we did it. We've hit 50,000 <laughs> listens. And we have to thank all of you out there in podcast land for making our show such a success. If you're just tuning in, you'll know that we're not just about babies, but we are all about names. So go back and listen to some of our other shows. If you're a name enthusiast, a name nerd, or have a serious interest in onomastics. And don't forget to join us on Facebook to discuss our show. Yeah. Facebook.com slash groups slash baby names podcast. It's so easy. In fact, welcome to our newest Facebook page members, Eric and Shira. Welcome. And speaking of our Facebook group, we got a message about our last episode, Temporal Names. Listener Nancy Keeley Patino said that in Ghana, it's customary to name your child after the day of the week on which they were born. So I'll go through the days of the week. Sunday... The male name is Quasi. The female is Akosua. Monday is Quadwo and Adwoa. Tuesday, Kwabina and Abena. Wednesday, Kwaku and Akua. Thursday, Yaw and Yaa. Friday, Kofi and Afua. And Saturday, Kwame and Ama. So thanks for that feedback, Nancy. And I'll make sure these names get added to the babynames.com database. And just so you know, Nancy is the mom of Leo that we spoke about many months ago. Oh, right. Okay. And now comes a segment, Names We've Discovered Since the Last Episode. Mal, what names have you liked lately? I was thinking about names that have interesting different origins, but all mean the same. So for a female name, it could be Lucy in the U.S., Lucia or Lucia in Italy, and Lucille or Lucy with an I-E in France. Of interest, the name Lucia or Lucia or Lucia or Lucia, good point, has nearly doubled since the year 2000 from around 400 to around 200 in popularity in the U.S. All of these names mean light. Yes. Some other names that I've been into lately include Mitzi and Sadie. Sadie is becoming way more popular lately, jumping from 243 to 46 between 2000 and 214. However, it has a bit of a dip since then, dropping to 71 in 2017. Sadie means princess, and so does Sarah. Let's well, see. Sadie, Sadie is actually a nickname for Sarah, like Sally is as well. Oh, okay. And by the way, now Mitzi is not nearly as popular, but reminds me a lot of Sadie. And I'm wondering if it is going to have the same increase in popularity. And Mitzi is a diminutive of Maria in German. Well, it's not in our database, Jen, or the top 1,000, according to the Social Security Administration. Oh, okay. But when I was looking it up, Mitsis, M-I-T-S-I-S, is in the database, and that's an interesting name. It is Native American for wise. I like that. I like that, too. I'll make sure that both Mitzi spellings get into the database. Thank you very much. I've been reading a lot of decor magazines since I've been slowly remodeling my home, and this month's traditional home had an article on rising star designers, and many of them had interesting names. One was O'Hara Davies Gaetano. O'Hara means large plain or field in Japanese, and it's also a common surname in Western Japan. There was Clary Bosbichel, and not Clara or Claire, but Clary with a Y. I think that's pretty. Hmm. There's Rajni Alex. Rajni means queen in Sanskrit, an East Indian language. 
Then there was Adel Legaspi. Adel is a German name meaning noble and is usually a short form of Edeltraud or Edelgard. It's also one of the components of the flower Edelweiss, which means noble white. We don't have the rights uh, to sing the song, but it was in the sound of music. And uh, yes. <laughs> I know you wanted to sing that now, but you can't. <laughs> okay, then I saw there was a design collection called Ambella, which I think would be a cool name, kind of like Amelia and Bella combined. So there you go, parents. A new and unique name. And then last but kind of least, it was Jennifer Soar with a G and one N. And that brings us to our topic of the week, created names and creative spellings. Mm-hmm. Now, all names are really created at some point in time, so it's just not cool to say that they're crazy or weird. That's just not the case. You know, we've discussed on previous shows how parents are wanting more unique names now, and one way to get a unique name is to create it. During that whole Aiden Braden Caden trend, parents were just picking letters to go in front of the sound Aiden, like Zayden with an X, Traden, Quaden, for example. These were created names based on a popular phonic structure. And the most common way to create a name is to combine two other names. Some parents are not satisfied with combining their genetic material to create a baby. They also want to grant the baby their names. Yes. <laughs> so they come up with a combination of their names, which in recent years has been called a couple name. For example, Miranda and Adam would be Maradam or Adanda. Ooh, Adanda is a cute name. This practice of combining the parents' names is common in the Utah Mormon culture, and specifically in Utah, although the practice does spread out a bit to neighboring states. Many of the names are created by combining the parents' names or names of people they want to honor, and some are just created. Now, there's a man named Wes Clark documented this back in 1996, And we've been in touch over the years because we were one of the few baby name sites online back then. Okay, so there were four sites online, Baby Names, eBay, Craigslist, and the Utah Baby Namer. Ah, LOL. (laughs) Anyway, you can read all about Utah baby names and specifically their naming conventions on utahbabynamer.blogspot.com. Okay. And I might add, you know, when I was doing some research on this episode, there were a lot of articles that called created names crazy or oddball, and I think that's kind of disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And even on this show, I try to always say that a name is not my style or not in my opinion because everyone has their own name preference. Like, they have their own food preferences. And your preference depends on your culture, your geography, your personality, and just what sounds good to you. So don't impose your preferences on others. Agreed. When we say blech to a name, we don't really mean to offend anyone out there. And everyone knows I'm very prone to say blech. It's just our opinion. Like Jennifer loves mushrooms and garbanzo beans. And trust me, I think they're blech. They're wonderful. I couldn't remain a vegan if I didn't have my mushrooms and garbanzo beans. (laughs) Anyway, now created names are also a huge part of the African-American culture. This became more prevalent in the 1970s after the civil rights movement and particularly after the Pulitzer Prize winning book Roots by Alex Haley, which was published in 1976. And that was a popular TV miniseries, too. Yes, it was. And there was a particularly disturbing scene in the miniseries where the slave owner says, I want to hear you say your name. Your name is Toby. I want to hear you say your name. And when Kunta Kinte repeats his African name, he is mercilessly whipped. It's really 
hard to watch. And that brought to light that slave masters brutally stripped African Americans of their identities by taking away their names. It dehumanized them. And I think that scene in particular was a catalyst to the culture intentionally shedding the Western European naming conventions. And as for surnames, black slaves were given the surname of the slave owners, weren't they? Correct. And for the first names, the names that were imposed upon them were either biblical names, because Christianity was also forced upon them, or Anglo-European names that the whites could remember, quote unquote. And they even went so far as to give them silly names like Boney or Big Mouth. That's horrible. It really is. So in response to this history and the movement, black Americans wanted to shed these names that were forced upon them by the white man and started creating names or using traditionally African names. And the prefixes la and de came from Louisiana Creole, is that right? Yes, that specifically came from the French Creole naming conventions. So D'Andre, for example, or LaShonda would be examples of that. And then one thing I learned from researching this episode, which was really interesting, is that from the Creole culture came the diacratic marks, the accents, like the accent over the E in Renee. And when Black Americans used accents in the 70s, there were no special characters on a typewriter, so sometimes the name recorder used apostrophes instead. And that's how the apostrophe became prevalent in Black American names. So if a mother wanted to name her son DeAndre, for example, with an accent over the E, it might have been typed as D-E apostrophe Andre. I had no clue. That's really interesting. I know. Now, obviously, it's more difficult to change your surname than to have a baby and give it a first name. Um, But civil rights leader Malcolm X did so to bring light to the fact that most African Americans bear the surname of an ancestor's slave owner. His birth name was Little. There really is a good interview with him on YouTube talking about this if our listeners want to learn more about it. Okay, well, now let's talk about alternate spellings of common names. That naming convention crosses cultures. Yes, so many, many cultures participate in changing the spellings of popular names. Now, you know I'm not a fan of creative spellings. I feel it puts a burden on a child. Jennifer with one N and a PH is going to have to say Jennifer with one N and a PH her whole life. But that being said, I did a casual poll of people who have had creatively spelled names. And although they didn't like them as a kid, like you can't find your name on a license plate and all, they liked them more as they became adults and it made them feel special. Well, I had a unique name and it had a traditional spelling and I always liked it. Except for those two weeks that you went by Leo. Well, didn't you spell your name Jen Uffer for a while with an A? I did. And again, I wanted to be unique and stand out. There were a bajillion Jennifers out there. And I got tired of having such a common name. And then I realized people were just going to spell it the traditional way anyway, so why bother? We do have alternate spellings on our website, babynames.com. Under the particular names, and if you don't see your particular spelling, email us at support at babynames.com, and we'll try to get it listed. Howdy, folks. This is Jennifer Moss, founder of babynames.com, and I'm here to tell you about the Baby Names Workbook. If you are pregnant and having trouble narrowing down your name choices or just can't find that perfect name, check out the Baby Names Workbook on Amazon.com. It is the first do-it-yourself guide to finding the perfect name. It contains practical name advice, fun stories from my 20-plus years of baby naming, worksheets, activities, name games, all to help you discover your own baby name likes, dislikes, and even source names from your own personal history. And once the workbook is complete, it becomes a fun keepsake 
for your family and child to enjoy for years to come. Check out the Baby Names Workbook on Amazon.com and it does not come on Kindle or ebook because you have to write in it. The Baby Names Workbook on Amazon.com. You'll be glad you did. And now it's time for Celebrity Baby News. Singer and former American Idol Carrie Underwood and her husband Mike Fisher are expecting their second child. The baby will join three-year-old brother Isaiah Michael Fisher. Very traditional, very biblical names. I wonder if they're going to stick with that naming convention. I don't know. Well, American country music singer-songwriter Angelina Presley, that's Angelina with an E-E, and her husband Jordan Powell are expecting a baby in January. This baby will be Presley and Powell's first child together, although Presley also has one 11-year-old son, Jed, from a previous marriage. She is a member of the female country trio Pistol Annie's with Miranda Lambert and Ashley Monroe. Cool. 22-year-old Chicago rapper Taylor Bennett is expecting a child, a boy. He didn't release any more information, but is excited because his older brother, Chance the Rapper, also is a child, but it's a girl, a daughter named Kensley Bennett, who's three. Well, that's pretty interesting that Taylor Bennett is expecting a child. I hope you meant his wife. (laughs) Yes. Well, (laughs) his partner. Justin Bieber's dad, Jeremy Mm -hmm. Walk. (laughs) Ah, Justin, shut up. Justin Bieber's dad, Jeremy, welcomed a baby girl last Thursday with third wife, Chelsea Rebelo. Mr. Bieber, 43, had Justin with his first wife, Patty Millette, two children, Jasmine, 10, and Jackson, 8, with second wife, Erin Wagner. And get this, new baby's name is Bay. Baby Bay Bieber. Hmm. Baby Bieber, baby, baby Bieber, baby, baby Bieber. What the heck? Okay. It sounds like Dr. Seuss. Singer Rachel Platten is pregnant, her first with husband Kevin Lazan. Rachel is best known for her debut single, Fight Song, about depression, which won many awards, even an Emmy, because she sang it on Good Morning America. Well, it's an important topic. Depression has become one of the most concerning issues marked by the Centers for Disease Control, with over 8% of American adults having depression in a given two-week period. Mm -hmm. Of note, women are almost twice as likely as men to have depression. Plus, we can't forget that there's a high prevalence of postpartum depression in women who have already suffered depression once in their lives already. Oh, good point. Yeah. Songs like Fight Song and Brave became anthems for mental health and became encouraging for places not only at mental health facilities, but also for children's hospitals. Look up on Google or YouTube those songs and the names of Fight Song and Brave and watch a video or two and you won't have a dry face, I can promise you that. Pretty Little Liars actress Troyan Belisario, interesting name, is pregnant. She and her Suits actor boyfriend Patrick J. Adams are expecting their first child together. The couple met on the set of the play Equivocation in 2009. They dated and then briefly split up, but then Patrick had a guest appearance as Hardy in PLL in 2010, and they got back together. Well, there you go. Got back together in a big way. Yeah, but neither of them married a prince, so there. Okay, don't know what that means, but I guess I should be watching the show. (laughs) Watch the show because Meghan Markle, who played his girlfriend on this show, is now a princess. Oh, there you go. She's a Sarah and a Sadie. (laughs) She is. And now it's time for Baby Names Q&A. Why don't you take the first letter, Mal? Well, I just will. (laughs) Hi, Jennifer and Mallory. My husband and I are due in November. We aren't finding out the sex, so we are still deciding on our top choices. 
We have our girl name, and we thought we had our boy name, but now I'm not so sure. We are thinking Grant Foster. I love it, but I don't love it as much as our girl name, so I'm not so sure anymore. Now I'm liking Foster King, King being my grandpa's middle name, but I don't know if it's too out there. Am I overthinking this? I just can't decide. Which do you think sounds better? Thank you, Andrea Shane. Well, Grant Foster reminds me of the Foster Grant sunglasses. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's a thing anymore. I know it was big in the 70s. But I like the name Grant. I think it's interesting that she chose a one-syllable first name and she has a one-syllable last name. That'll make it kind of short, Grant Shane. Because, you know, obviously the middle name is not really used that often. Foster Shane, I think, has a better flow to it. King is cute for a middle name. I wouldn't use it as a first name because, again, it's one of those titles and expectation names. But I think it's perfectly fine as a middle name. What do you think? Well, usually I can't stand anything you say, but I agree <laughs> with you completely. <laughs> wow. No, really. I agree. That with and you. garbanzo beans. All right. I then. Know. <laughs> no, really. I think that Foster Grant and Grant Foster are too much alike. And I know we're in our 50s now, but what was it? You know, nothing comes between me and my Fosters or was that <laughs> me and my Calvins? <laughs> I don't Calvin. know. Foster Grant is just too much I think it's kind of like Kelly Green like we talked about in the last episode Mm -hmm. I like Foster too I wish we knew more family names maybe Roy I mean but Roy has the problem of the serial killer factor I think what serial killer (laughs) who's Roy the serial killer (laughs) I think you're thinking of Ray I don't know I take it back. (laughs) No take backs. Not allowed in podcasting. But what I mean is that Roy means king or king means Roy. So Oh, I get it. Okay. Do Roy instead of King. But Roy is kinda old fashioned, so I don't know if I would go with Roy. Okay. Here's our second letter. Dear Mallory and Jennifer, I really like word names as baby names, and now that I found out I'm pregnant, I've been putting them on my name list on babynames.com. But my family thinks I'm crazy. So here are some examples. <laughs> Strategy, yes. illusion, Ugh. serendipity, Eek. ephemeral, Maybe. ethereal, Ugh. kiss, mm-hmm. and blessing. What's wrong if my partner and I want to use these as names? Would the child really get teased by any of these? All of them. I'd like your expert opinions. Let me read the letter (laughs) first. Interjections. Okay, so I'd like your expert opinions. Thanks, Carrie J. I think I gave you my expert opinions on all of them. You know, serendipity is kind of cute. You can call her Sarah. Ephemera means like letters and it's like old letters and photographs, paper items um, that are antique. And I don't know how many people know that out there, but I mean, you know, it's pretty, but it also kind of sounds like a cold medicine. Mm -hmm. Um, Ethereal, I think, is cute. We could call her, I don't know what you could call her. Ethel. (laughs) Real Ethel. I wouldn't do kiss. I think that's too sexualized Mm -hmm. uh, for a girl or a boy for that matter. Yeah. Hey, come give me a kiss, kiss. I knew a woman named Bless. She was an attorney. So I like Bless better than Blessing um, because I don't know why. I just like it because it's a little more neutral. I got nothing. And you just said, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mine. You know, Carrie, honestly... I think that I have made it clear on Baby Names podcast that I am not a fan of names that are words. And I think that strategy. That is your opinion. Yes, exactly. These are my opinion and my opinions only. You can do whatever you want. But I mean, depending on her last name, it it might be sound cool i guess serendipity jones might sound cute but it sounds like indiana jones i guess well indiana jones is cool you know when i was coming up with my daughter's name not much sounded good with her last name so i made 
the prettiest first name I could come up with, honestly. So, you know what? God's blessings to you. Do what you want to do. So there, Mallory chooses blessing. Okay, then. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Email Jennifer at Mallory at podcast at babynames.com or call our message line, area code 702-848-5510. That's the show. Stay cool, everyone. And congrats to all the parents who trotted their kids back to school this past week. I remember the feeling. It was like a big exhale. Happy days. Don't forget to subscribe to our show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, or wherever you get your podcasts. And please, 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 if you love us, rate us. But not if you hate us. Who could hate us? We're so funny. I know, but maybe people with the middle name Roy. (laughs) Now they hate us. I did an interview over at the Motherhood on Tap podcast, and both of the hosts, Sarah and Pamela, just love our show. And hey, you know what, Jen? The next time we record, I'll be at your house. Oh, that's so cool. We'll actually be in the same room. So exciting. So take care, everyone. I love you, Mal. I love you. And we can't forget our other sisters, Kate and Sue. We love love you, too. And our kids, Veronica and Miranda. Yep, when they behave. (laughs) Okay, so tune in next time. Have a great couple of weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.